Hello and uh, welcome to this video. Today we will talk about Postman. Let me just open it. Postman is a API testing tool which has uh, lots of features that are really useful and really user friendly. For example, we will start by just describing Postman. As you can already see, I've started Postman on the screen. Uh, the main things you should know about Postman is that uh, test cases can be structured in collections and it is recommended that you create a collection before you test an endpoint. Let's say test collection. Uh, generally, you can also add description, authorization, all these things that are, if you know them before you start eff effectively testing your API, you can just add them here and they're gonna be like default. Also, what is really important for you to know when using Postman is this, the environment. We're gonna go here just a second. So, as you can already see here, an environment is a set of variables that allow you to switch from context or request. Or, long story short, environments can be shared between multiple uh, workspaces or collections. Let's say you have a collection that you need to run on um, multiple environments. Environments like stage, um, pre-prod, QA, dev, or whatever your company calls those environments. So. You have a set of tests which you want to run on multiple environments. Then you just add multiple environments here and each uh, collection you have, you can set it here to use a certain environment. For example, we have no environment here. Okay, so you went to the basic. In Postman you create test cases which are stored in collections and for uh, managing uh, multiple environments you use here environments let's just create one if we're still here we're gonna um, test environment and here you can have multiple variables like for example url we're gonna get to that in a second and i don't know um, common these variables should be something specific to your api and should be uh, used in a way so you don't have to write them each time. So that's why you add them to your environment and you have your test environment with your variables. Now if you go to my collection you have here test environment and for example let's say you want to add a request just go click add requests um, simple get Select the collection where you want to save it. We want to save it to test collection. Save to test collection. And now you have a simple request which is using the test environment. Okay, before we move on, I want to show you a little page. All the links will be in the description. Uh, rapidapi.com has a lot of free APIs which you can use to test and uh, better extend your knowledge about uh, testing APIs. For this example, we cho I choose API football because everybody loves football. Um, this is free. I mean, you just have to log in with an account. You don't have to pay to anything. And we're gonna get to use some of these tests just to show you how everything goes. Okay. So, just imagine this is the description you are getting from your client. You have your get request, which, for example, we have get predictions. Okay, get several predictions for one fixture. Um, header required is the Rapid API project, the host, and the API keys. Also, um, required parameters is a fixture id okay now let's create the get where were we okay so we have this uh, get predictions the endpoint uh, in order for you to have access to this uh, api key you need to enter your visa or mastercard just for them to make sure you have a valid card it is free for um, a limited of 30 requests 
So yeah, let's get started. First we need the URL to which we're making the requests. And then as you can see here, as for parameters we have uh, two uh, required parameters. The first one is we go to headers, xrapid API and xrapid key. Um, as you can see here, I'm adding these two parameters as headers. Why? Because as you can see here, we have headers parameters. Okay. Then we're going to copy their value. This value depends on each uh, individual. I mean, it's uh, related to your account. Okay. So you've made two You've copied all the required parameters, you've copied the endpoint, now you can just click send and you've made a get. As you can see, the results is going to be structured like this. Um, the first tab is going to be the body. In this case, the API is a JSON, which returns also a JSON format, the results predictions. Okay, the details are not really important, but just so you can see it returns something. Also, you can view it as raw. You can view it in multiple ways. What is also important, uh, cookies and headers. Headers also for the response. So response has body, cookie, headers and test result. Since you added no test result here, you're not going to see anything. Um, what is test result? For example, let's go to this test section you have a request which want to be automated when you make a request you want to validate the status code let's go with status code as you can see here postman on the right side has a lot of uh, helpful tutorials and uh, predefined test snippets for example as I mentioned status code you just click it pm.test status code is 200 and if you go send again you can also see here we have test which is passed because it returns status 200. If we put here like 500, let me just show you, it failed the assertion. Okay, I'm gonna change it back. So this was a simple get. Was it that hard? I think not. You also need to be uh, really careful to what you're putting where. For example, this. In this documentation, it is really good explain explained. These are the headers parameters, the required parameters. In this case, the required parameters can be just added as you've seen in Postman. I just added it to the endpoint and that's it. You need no body in this case. Just um, let me just uh, show you something. If you really want, you can change this by adding a fixture ID okay and adding this value okay let's see it will work no 404 as you can see is status not found because it requires the parameter to be sent uh, directly after the URL and not as a separate parameter if we put it back 200 I mentioned earlier that it's important that you use uh, variables so let's just do this right now in the URL variable we're gonna add this and we're gonna put a fixture ID here fixture ID and the value we just needed copy update okay then when we go to make the get when we want to create the get we just put this this means um, this is the parameter URL we just uh, initialized and besides this we can put uh, fixture ID as you can see it's gonna be pre-filled and you click send okay 
So let's see why. There's something I did wrong. This is expecting. Yeah, I see now. I put it in initial value instead of the current value. You need to be careful with these things. And then we do another get. As you can see, we also have the predictions, we have the test results, we have the headers, everything is as expected. And you can now just create let's say a new get or any other type of request and you just use these parameters. This can also be edited later on and you can create another one. Ah, not from here, okay, here. Test environment 2, let's say URL test URL add. Okay. And let's say you want to use the same uh, request in a different environment to just change it from here. Click send. And there was an error. As you can see here, this is expected because I'm, I just typed there an invalid URL, so there's not going to be any valid response. This is Postman in short. Um, this is what I was trying to tell you. This is really user-friendly, easy to use for everybody, you just add some parameters, you have a lot of tutorials, also what is really important. If you go to the launchpad, work smarter with Postman, create a core request, everything is really detailed and everything has lessons. You can learn right from here, you can start the documentation and design and create your own test case as you need it. Just remember to put them in separate collections and create uh, multiple environments as you are needed for your project. When you are finished, you can save or you can, for example, export. You can export your collection, what type of collection, and you can um, pass it on or move it to a Git or SVN or other versioning system. That's it. Thanks for watching. In the next videos, I will go uh, more in detail with headers, body, tests, authorization and everything.